Okay, uh, welcome back class and uh, we will resume our lecture where we left off last time. So uh, last time we were talking about uh, some different aspects of, uh, of at the urban uh, at urban level or at the city level. Uh, like we were talking about urban transportation systems within a city and for the first part of transportation network in the city at the city level, we talked about urban form. So anyone who wants to recall or wants to define what is what do you mean by urban form anyone urban form what is urban form okay uh, so okay uh, so urban form is basically the physical imprint of the city or the shape of the city, the physical shape of the city. So that is a form. So how does that? Uh, yeah, uh, how does that? Impact your transportation network. So urban form, if you can like say is this uh, kind of uh, your uh, physical imprint of the city and how it uh, how different components of transportation uh, influence that shape. So the first one are the modes. What kind of modes are there? So depending on the different modes of modes there, we will have to define the infrastructure. And then depending upon the users and their uh, priorities or their choices, your transportation network will impact and that ultimately will impact your city design, your urban design. So like urban form we've talked about is uh, the physical sh everything will be constructed. For example, if people are traveling from point A to point B, okay, and the A and B, obviously there will be some kind of a built-up area or a, uh, 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 origin destination which will be built up. And along the way, the people who are traveling they might have to stop somewhere, so they need some kind of infrastructure supporting that. So that influences your travel. So wherever you're going to be traveling, you are creating a potential of development. And when you're creating a potential of development, like uh, maybe it's, you can call it a commercial development a potential. So the different commercial shops, commercial activities will start play, uh, start happening along those particular routes. So travel, uh, that form of the city is greatly influenced by the way the people travel and the distance between two things, the origin and destination. And, and that form can be of different types. So you cannot say that, uh, uh, okay, that uh, 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 gives me, uh, brings me back to our previous lecture. What are the elements of urban form? What are the different types of urban form we've discussed? Anyone? What are different elements of urban form? Yes, Rizwan, please. Uh, so water bodies, we got a green areas. Topography, we got a road okay. network. Yes, yes, Rida. Uh, sir, uh, the buildings, uh, the sir, CBD, where land use are jata mm -hmm. it... Okay, shape. Sir, so, uh, city layout, your pattern, kya hai, pe grid iron, hai, your city basically layout, layout, kya hai, transportation networks, ka, or second land ownership, B, sir, is my matter. Okay, great. Yes, and Cephala? Uh, yes, Samja, please. Uh, sir, land use, se bhi is pe effect, part hai. Kis kis mm -hmm. land use and industrial or commercial or residential okay great so depending upon the like the, even if there is consistent uh, travel distances between two points the built up area built up along the routes they can vary it can vary okay so uh, th there is no consistent uh, like uh, urban form consistently along the belt okay so different variety will happen and then because of the uh, uh, introduction of automobile dependency like we are we are very much uh, a prefer or we opt for using our own private cars or family cars we rely on moving on our, our own private cars uh, so that 
kind of creates uh, unlimited uh, options for you to travel anywhere, provided you have road. And when you can travel on road anywhere along the along the city or in the periphery, the potential of urban development grows. And if that road, if you are getting accessibility over, over uh, wherever you want to have an accessibility, for example, you just create a road over there. And if a private car start using that road, the land prices, the urban development potential, that significantly increases in the in those areas. Now, it depends upon how much your urban planning or your master plan of the city they support dispersion of the city or build up of a compact city or a high density development. So it all depends. It also correlates with the government or the institutions preferences to have an automobile dependent development or transit oriented development. So we'll go into more of these details in the coming lecture as well. So let's talk about, about a typical of evolution of a city like for, uh, there's no uh, how that's a typical city grew over time. So there are some different uh, phases uh, of uh, development and uh, I'm talking about development purely from perspective of transportation. Of course, urban development is uh, dependent upon so many factors that we cannot uh, like uh, undertake all of them into consideration, but transportation is one of the major factors. So I'll be only talking about the from transportation perspective. So once when we're talking about the original cities were kind of a walled city or walkable city. OK, so it has certain boundary. You can travel. Maybe you can walk 30 minutes around it. So that was the optimum limit of a city size. Anywhere we, you can walk in 30 minutes within 30 minutes that had a potential of urban growth. So city, of course, it will not follow this particular perfect circle. It will be a more of organic form and irregular shape. But still, it can be uh, it can be visualized uh, hypothetically that within 30 minutes we can travel. OK, so. It was kind of a limit of the city or the potential of the urban growth in that and city grew like this all over the world. So then. Uh, we can call that uh, like a walking or horse car, uh, horse car era zone. So later what happened that uh, in American now, this is an example from American cities basically. So uh, electric street cars were introduced in which public mass transit could be. Uh, uh, could transport a lot of people from one place to another. So what happened that along those particular lines, along those particular electric routes, where uh, uh, I would say uh, a route, uh, I would say uh, which a route uh, which cannot be changed, like it was uh, uh, constructed. So along that route, like kind of a linear development started growing. So development uh, that line or that route, uh, I would say network basically that network created a potential of urban development along those particular routes and along those particular routes. Development again started and depending upon the how was the network layout uh, that streetcar uh, network rail network was laid down the shape of city then transformed primarily following that factor. Then came your automobile. The first automobile on uh, was in for, uh, like added to it. So what happened that different routes, uh, the rail network, which could not provide access to certain places, the automobile private cars kind of started uh, assessing those, those areas. So again, that created a lot of potential. Now beyond that network, a lot of potential was created that now people can, because they can easily reach here and they can easily reach to the center now because of the accessibility, then maybe people can start start settling outside. So kind of a suburbanization started going on. So this was another, uh, you can say, uh, feature or you can say transportation evolution, which affected directly how the city grew. Then nowadays we are now moved on towards uh, highways, freeways, big roads, wide roads, uh, signal free corridors, so that kind of a provided now 
and again a potential development along those routes as well, especially at the key junctions uh, of the road. Uh, where, uh, where kind of a commercial activities started taking place. So another kind of a CBD grew at the city sites at the outskirts in in the whenever you see that there is a uh, when you're entering a city there's always a congested interchange over there so that interchange you can which can also be termed as edge city that start developing another mini cbd kind of thing started happening there so that now due to freeway uh, uh, freeway era the cities now started connecting to the other cities so that from a very small urban perspective we more moved on into a more of a regional approach uh, regional level basically and then then what happened that edge cities start popping out at the outskirts or the, the places which we are going to and going to be entering the city and that gave a lot of potential that freeway era basically gave a potential that city can now grow anywhere okay so uh linking to or just type uh if you want to uh if you recall and uh if planners basically recall that uh, uh we move from from a mini cbd uh, okay uh, if anyone does not know what is cbd central business district any student who does not know okay so what happened that decentralization started happening and we moved from a monocentric city towards a hybrid or you can say a uh, uh, multi CBD growth started in the city. So multi CBD started have uh, starting emerging in the cities in the city. So that was all of influence. Now you can maybe link it to the land use or maybe you try to link it towards uh, the built up area density growth or something. But in the background, transportation played a very vital role in determining where and how city will grow in the future. So it has a very big influence on your city centers any question till now any question on urban growth and transportation link i hope it is very clear if you want to comment on something or maybe give example from your own city that do you think your own city is dependent on transportation networks or how your city grew over time depending on a particular road network Anyone? Yes, Ahmed, please. Assalamualaikum, sir. Sir, uh, uh, the city I, I live in, Mirpur Azad Kashmir, is basically uh, its growth is all along three main roads. So, if, if you see it from uh, from above, you will see that there are three main roads uh, that uh, are uh, almost parallel to each other, and the whole city is around. Uh, those main roads sir. okay so probably those all three roads are commercialized and uh, might have a very high land prices and most yes, of sir. the development or high rise development is along those three roads y yes sir absolutely sir. yes in the future the, uh, if there is no option of uh, laying down or extending the road network these three ro main roads will remain uh, the primary uh, influencer which will then shape your city Anyone else who wants to give you an example? Anyone from Faisalabad? Uh, sir, clock tower? Yes, so everything, old city was develop, developed along, or the old city is basically shaped from the city center, which is the clock, and then 12 that streets is emerging, and that gives you a development, give a shape of development, right? Anyone else? Just recall, just think about your city. Yes, Pimra, please. Um, sir, Faisalabad's uh, new city is uh, uh, presently that is also developed along the canal, which is central ek arterial canal hai, and uh, canal road and then uh, further developments along it. Yeah, very good example. So new development, new roads, maybe they can uh, incentivize people to have a good kind of development. Uh, anything else? Any other example before we move on? So that, for example, from a particular or typical uh, American city, 
but that was not the case all over the world different cities different continents countries uh, they have their own uh, way of pace of development with respect to the automobile or uh, transportation evolution so when they reach that certain level that then in certain time periods their pattern of development was different so european cities are generally uh, seen as more dense as compared to the american or australian cities uh, but european sometimes asian cities they are very dense and they are not expanding uh, like they are not automobile dependent too much so all of the development is put uh, along the main transit oriented uh, so uh, transits or or you can say main public transportation networks so so this is just a generic comparison between north american cities and the european cities where at the in the same era different type of development happened but you can see that more or less development was dependent on the type of transportation network or the uh, type of uh, transportation evolution which was happening in those cities that governed the shape of the city so you might get an idea that yes transportation is influencing the urban form of the city so generally it can be seen that uh, uh, different modes will have different uh, you can say accessibility or different uh, uh they have a potential to cover they have a certain limit that they can travel to up to these distances so by walking let's assume that we can walk uh, maybe 5 to 10 kilometers and anyone can easily walk so we have a limitation that okay we can walk 5 10 kilometers and then after you cannot walk more than that then certain uh, simply uh, simply other kind of uh, modes they have Uh, they can travel or commute uh, to different places. So, if we map it according to the one hour travel time, that one travel time upon uh, depending upon different modes, we can reach out at certain certain areas. Certain we can assess those areas. So, depending upon different types of modes, this is just uh, uh, again hypothetical and uh, ideal scenario that this would be a shape of a particular city uh, depending of upon the uh, depending upon the kind of transportation modes available to the people any question regarding this figure this is on please uh, sir this street car ka dobara repeat kar denge okay uh, street car is basically i'll show you this so to be better this one this electric street car it was very much predominant in the american and european cities but in context of asian city i have never uh, not seen this at least in pakistan i have not seen these street cars you can call it trams if you mm, have want to link it so trams basically so they have predefined routes that cannot be changed here is one yes sir okay so moving on if we are going to be linking our transportation with evolution of cities uh, with respect to uh, energy and transportation so that these are some of the key issues like uh, key infrastructure development was primarily at the first uh, in the uh, beginning of evolution of the cities these were the transportation networks like local railroads tramways and then airports freeways so we were we evolved from a walking city and transit city to an auto city and it is uh, uh, you can say prophesized or assumed that in the future because we are very much opting we are very much relying on technology that maybe the in the future our technology will have a lot of influence on transportation and ultimately that will affect the urban growth the growth of the city so if uh, uh you can travel without driving or maybe the artificial intelligence will drive you so maybe maybe we will have unlimited space to where to settle down and where to live in the city uh and then of course according to, these are some other key transitions according to the evolution of these cities so maybe uh, like our land use is basically changed and we are uh, we emerged from agriculture to industrial now we are moving on to the services to information or it based uh transitions and of course then of course energy is also very much correlated with the 
uh, your uh, evolution of the cities. And probably you might say that this energy is also directly dependent or uh, influencing your type of modes as well or travel transportation systems as well. So this is another way to look at the evolution of cities. If you want to say that no, only transportation does not impact your evolution of cities, but again, it plays a very vital role in evolution of the cities. This is another example that in a, in a, in a typical European city, a world city, you can say that it had a certain, or no, it's had an organic structure. It has was mixed use and it was very high density. And what happened with the, the streetcar, you can call it or transit stations. We, this is, let's say, assume this is transit stations. These are the stops of the, of the train. So what happened that along those train stations, we have certain potential of development. So this was like medium density started emerging, misuse was there, like depending upon different grid patterns or different issues, start, uh, different type of street patterns started emerging at the stops. So we had kind of a transit city. So this is give you an idea about this is a transit oriented development. And currently we are in the automobile area era in US and predominantly Australian cities. These are low density, diverse and separated land uses defined grid pattern, cul-de-sac base, and decentralized uh, uh, CBDs, decentralized uh, uh, central business district it spread all over the city. The city will, will now shape more haphazardly as compared to a definite city which was controlled by the transit. So according to this, uh, where do our cities stand? Let me go to this one. Okay, where does our city stand? Pakistani city, typical Pakistani cities. Just take an example. Okay, uh, traditional cities we call it Lahore, Rawalpindi. These are traditional cities. So where do we stand? Anyone? Yes, sure, please. Sir, auto base. क्योंकि ट्रैवल इंडिपेंडेंट ऐसे हम नहीं कर सकते हैं और ना कोई पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम इतना कोई इंटरकनेक्टेड है हमारा ओके सो वी आर एट द ऑटो सिटी और ऑटोमोबाइल सो यस सालिया प्लीज यस सर आई वुड एग्री समवेयर बिटवीन ऑटो टू टेलीमेट्रिक के درمیان में ओके ओके सो एंड व्हाट डू यू थिंक दैट इज दिस ऑटोमोबाइल सिटी इट्स इट do you think this is the future for pakistani cities as well do you think we should like if all all the cities in america or australia probably are uh, having a shape like this so do you think we should follow the same pattern anyone are we going on the right path do we do you support automobile type of development do you think that transit oriented development is better yes ahmed you first Uh, sir, uh, I think uh, public transport should be uh, uh, better in our cities in future. Uh, less less dependency on on automobiles is will be better for us uh, in terms of uh, sustainability and also for uh, environment, sir. Okay, great. So uh, kind of uh, like uh, everything will be developed along the stops, and the city center must be pedestrianized so people can travel around. So that is a typical European city. लेकिन इसमें ये है सर हमारी डेवलपमेंट बहुत ज्यादा होती है मतलब बिल्कुल ही कोई एक कंट्रोल कंट्रोलिंग अथॉरिटीज हैं लेकिन वही मसला है कि इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं होती कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है अर्बन स्प्रॉल बहुत ज्यादा होती जा रही है और सर हम जा इसी मतलब क्या कहेंगे सर आ, मतलब एक्सपेंशन ही हो रही है हमारी आ, लो डेंसिटी की तरफ ही जा रहे हैं लेकिन हमें जो हमारा इस टाइम जो हमारा इशू है तो हमें लाइक जैसे इस्लामाबाद में है तो सर मतलब हमारा जो मेजर इशू है हाउसिंग पे हम चले जाते हैं फिर कि हाउसिंग को हमने अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग प्रोवाइड करें सर हमारे लाइक स्लोगन हमारे यही होते हैं कि अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग प्रोवाइड करनी है लेकिन फिर हम लोग डिवेलपर्स मतलब जिस तरह रोल प्ले करते हैं इन चीजों में मतलब नेगेटिवली वो चीजों को लाइक फिर लग्जरी की तरफ और इकोनॉमी को देखकर तो वो उनकी वजह से हमारी मतलब एट द एंड हमारी जो है कोई कंट्रोल डेवलपमेंट हो नहीं रही 
मतलब बिल्कुल उस चीज से अपोजिट है जो हम कह रहे हैं ना कि उन्होंने कंट्रोल किया हुआ तो हम लोग उनको कर रहे हैं फॉलो या अगर हम लोगों ने स्टार्ट किया ऑटोमोबिल सिटी बनाना तो हम तो सर ये मतलब हम चाह रहे होते हैं हमारे स्लोगन भी वही होते हैं बट हम लोग एट द एंड वो चीज नहीं करते उसके अपोजिट ले जाते हैं does our master plan support this kind of development like automobile or does our master plans or let's talk about the lahore master plan or islamabad or rawalpindi master plan uh, if you have an example from your own city i would be happy like for example multan is like we have just seen that multan is having a rapid growth in the uh, agricultural productive areas uh, so do you think our master plans have this limitation or they don't focus on this what could be the problem do you think it is anyone or salia you have if you want to have add any point to the previous conversation you can also add to that yes salia please uh, sir uh, i actually had a question ke uh, uh, hum uh, is baat ko question kare ke uh, cities ko uh, should they be transit or should they be Uh, उनकी ओरिएंटेशन क्या होनी चाहिए बट लाइक पाकिस्तान में तो अभी तक लाइक like, uh, हमारे कुछ एरियाज ऐसे हैं नॉट जस्ट मतलब इन साइड द सिटी लाइक इन द पेरेफ्री जहाँ पे हमारी पेनिट्रेशन नहीं है अभी तक प्रॉपरली uh, पाकिस्तान में बहुत सी ऐसी जगह हैं तो शुड नॉट फोकस बी ऑन बिल्डिंग रोड इन एनी केस लाइक जस्ट बी ऑन बिकॉज और किसी तरह हमारी सर्विस की पेनिट्रेशन कैसे हो सकती है Yes, yes, Salia, you are absolutely right. That area which are le- less developed, comparatively less developed, those should be prioritized, and there should be kind of a road infrastructure should be improved over there. Okay, so I agree with that. And those areas automatically have the roads connected. All your settlements have road connections, but of course the road conditions or road infrastructure is not good. i agree with that part i am just talking about a traditional or metropolitan cities like karachi maybe maybe is lahore which is going to be a develop it is has a potential of growing uh, further so multan is now being developed so i'm talking about uh, uh, metropolitan level or mega cities at that time, i'm talking about that but you're right at the small level we uh, we also need to ensure that those areas should not be left behind as well yes class anyone else uh are the planners successful in managing your city via transportation or not yes samad please sir so, jaisa aapne master planning ki baat ki to agar islamabad ke ke islamabad ke case mein dekhe sir to hamare master plan mein already provisions ye hain ki islam mein ye kashmir sirnagar highway jo hai uska right of way already unne 1200 feet rakha hua hai ya islamabad expressway ki baat kare to hum khud hi matlab ye promote kar rahe hain ki jaake matlab जो ट्रांजिट ओरिएंटेड डेवलपमेंट होनी है तो उसके लिए हम ऑलरेडी प्रोविजंस उसमें रख रहे हैं अगर हम वहाँ पे शुरू में मास्टर प्लान में हम रिस्ट्रिक्शंस रखें और रेस्टोराइजेशन वगैरह को हम इंकर्ज करें तो इससे फिर हम ट्रांजिट ओरिएंटेड डेवलपमेंट से दूर जा सकते हैं लेकिन हमने प्रोविजन ऐसे रखे हुए हैं कि जो ट्रांजिट ओरिएटेड डेवलपमेंट को ऑलरेडी वो सपोर्ट करे Okay, so that is why my question, right? So much that was my question. That okay, so you you are implying that the Islamabad's master plan itself is very much automobile oriented. Uh, if I'm if I'm right, right? Some of that is what you wanted to say. Yes, sir, exactly. Okay, yes, very good. So in master in case of master Islamabad, we are not prioritizing transit oriented development. Anyone else? Anyone wants to give example from anywhere else? लेकिन जो होता है, उसमें हम बहुत ज्यादा वीक है तो हमें एक तो ये चीज और दूसरा जो हमारे प्रीवियसली जितने भी मास्टर प्लान बने हैं उसमें जो जो मास ट्रांसिट है या बी आर टीज है या कोई इस तरह की पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन को इतने ज्यादा फोकस में नहीं रखा गया और सेकेंड एक और थर्ड चीज जो पहले सालिया ने भी डिस्कस की कि हम लेट्स लेट्स जो हम स्ट्रक्चर प्लान रोड या हम प्रपोज कर देते हैं लेकिन वो बनते नहीं हैं तो उसकी वजह से फिर वो कंट्रोल बहुत मुश्किल हो जाता है तो उनको टाइमली अगर वो बन जाए तो ये भी एक अच्छी स्ट्रेटजी हो सकती है शेप अप करने में ओके गुड थैंक यू फॉर योर व्यू पॉइंट थैंक यू 
Okay, uh, so uh, if no one has any more question, I was really looking forward to the master plans from anywhere else than our typical cities. Uh, anywhere from the smaller uh, small secondary cities, anyone example from that side? Okay, so that brings you that, okay, transit oriented development are mostly uh, high density and automobile is kind of a low density. So, how much is just the density important in shape, like built up density I'm talking about, or maybe population density? Uh, there's a high correlation between built up density and the population density. So, uh, is density important for a city? Or how much density influences your transportation network? Anyone? How will you answer in your paper if you are not ready here? Okay. Uh, uh, yes, Alia, please. सर जैसे हम टोक्यो की एग्जांपल ले लेते हैं जितनी आपकी कॉम्प्लेक्स होती जाएगी बिल्ट अप डेंसिटी उतनी ज्यादा आपको एक कॉम्प्लेक्स सिस्टम ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन चाहिए होता है और उतने एफिशिएंट ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम्स चाहिए होते हैं तो आई गेस लाइक एंड इन स्मॉलर प्लेसेस जहां पे ऑब्वियसली कम होती है डेंसिटी पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी लेट्स से तो वहां पे आपके सिंपलर मोड्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन होते हैं और इतना आपको ट्रांजिट नहीं चाहिए होता जितना आप लाइक प्रॉब्ली बसेस पे या अपनी लोकल उस पे या अपने सेल्फ उन पे मोड्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन पे डिपेंड कर सकते हैं ओके सो यू आर सेइंग दैट इफ आई एम गेटिंग यू राइट यू आर सेइंग दैट इन हाई डेंसिटी डेवलप एरियाज पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट विल बी मोर एफिशिएंट इन हाई डेंस एरियाज राइट यस सर Okay. Yes. Okay. That's fine. That's uh, very logical. Yes, Ahmed, please. Uh, sir, I wanted to say that uh, uh, in high density uh, density areas, it is easier to plan and provide uh, mass transit uh, uh, because uh, uh, it will be easier to uh, find the route uh, which which that uh, transit uh, is uh, required to take. So if 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 uh, the density is low. Uh, it will be much harder to uh, provide uh, public transport in 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 that area sir okay okay great okay so uh, uh any planner who want to distinguish what is compact city and high what is difference between compact city and a high density city any planner you have already gone through the land sustainable land use course as well so what is difference between compact city and a high density city Yes, sir. Please. Sir, this may be a difference here. That compact city, we have distances ko short. We have, I mean, short distances. We have things provide. And when we high rise, we have vertically. Jate. Okay. So compact city is basically it is also a kind of high density because you are limiting the short spaces. So it you are opting for the high uh, density. Uh, yes, Sharia. सर कम्प्लेक्सिटी में ज्यादा मिक्स्ड यूज की तरफ भी हम जा सकते हैं ताकि वो डिस्टेंस वो कम लोगों को ट्रैवल करना पड़े सर्विसेज अवेलेबल करने के लिए यस डेफिनेटली सो दैट इज द राइट आंसर बेसिकली आई वाज गोइंग फॉर यस इन कम्प्लेक्सिटी वी हैव हाई मिक्स्ड यूज डेंसिटी मिक्स्ड यूज लैंड यूजेस सो पीपल डोंट नीड टू ट्रैवल फास स्पेसेस सो ऑफ कोर्स दैट कम्प्लेक्सिटी विल आल्सो टर्न आउट टू बी अ वेरी समटाइम्स हाई डेंस डेंस डेंसिटीज but that main issue is in compact cities that we are opting for a uh, 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 mixed land uses we are promoting mixed land air uses that people don't need to travel to certain places so that is one of the main difference uh, so so just say that uh, by saying that low uh, land use density like uh, salia just mentioned that how much do you how do you how many of you agree that high population density is more uh, developed public transportation is more efficient in highly dense areas how much much of you do you agree with this point 
ओके शेहेब शेरियार ओके अहमद तालिया शेरियार ओके तो ओके चार सो ओके so most of you think that but that is not always true this is a misconception that only public transport is efficient in high density areas so that is not always true that was uh, uh, many cities uh, have seen that public transportation regardless if they high density or low density public transportation can turn out to be efficient only people start using it uh, that is like people will opt for public transportation and that is again when we are talking about more choice modeling which we will we'll talk later in our lectures uh, that why people which are what are the primary factors which influences people even if it is a very efficient i would say public transportation system okay what are the factors people will opt for private car their own cars and when will they opt for public transport we'll go into each uh, detail of it in the coming lectures as well so this this is according to the same scale by the way okay so this is two cities with very similar population sizes very similar but their urban built up footprint it is very different their density is very different but same number of population so this is another indicator that uh, some people say that no high density area is directly uh, like population is very much like uh, uh population is density is higher where there is built up density so this or built up uh, building upon that argument so this is a footprint of two uh, two cities one in america and one in europe barcelona spain atlanta usa so these are more or less same number of million population but the build up area is very high so according to this a uh, like visual what do you think which public transportation system would be Uh, efficient in which city anyone uh, yes amza please uh, sir public transportation system barcelona mein zyada effective hoga kyunki distances bhi kam hai aur density zyada hai to log use karenge use jabki atlanta mein i think zyada chances hai ki log apne personal vehicle rakhna ज़्यादा प्रेफर करेंगे। यस 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 सर सर आई आई वुड एग्री विद दैट आल्सो बिकॉज़ बार्सिलोना का जो प्लान है वो सारा नेबरहुड डिजाइन पे पे वॉकेबिलिटी काफी उन्होंने फोकस किया हुआ तो दैट्स व्हाई द उनका ट्रांजिट सिस्टम है बहुत एफिशिएंट है how much better it would be if you to launch a new transportation system for let's assume that both cities don't have a transportation network would it be easier to construct at atlanta or would it be easier to con construct in barcelona so from civil engineering perspective okay yes amza sir dono ke apne apne challenges hain atlanta mein distances bahut zyada hain to highly unfeasible hai aur barcelona developed hai to land purchasing mein सर दिवालिया हो जाएंगे यस एनीवन एल्स सो गुड गुड डिप्लोमेटिक आंसर हम हम सर एनीवन एल्स ओके यस आलिया प्लीज सर बार्सिलोना में इट वुड बी इजीयर टू बिल्ड अ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम उनकी जो डिजाइन हुई हुई है वो पूरी सिटी जिस तरह डिजाइन हुई हुई है इट्स वेरी कंट्रोल्ड एंड प्लान्ड uh okay yes we, we will go in bar this barcelona example in the later in the lecture yes uh yes sir alam please sir uh, atlanta mein chances hai ki jo construction type hogi wo uh, highways ki surat mein zyada hogi aur barcelona mein it would basically be arterials ya phir short length jo roads hoti hain cul de sac types yeah so maybe we have to go underground in barcelona and in atlanta we don't need to go underground i think this is what you want to say sir alam uh, yes sir okay okay share yaar please uh, sir barcelona mein maybe wo is problem mein hum wo uh, run in kar jayein ki wahan pe wo heritage wo sit wo <coughs> buildings aur uski jo sari 
टूरिज्म के एस्पेक्ट से जो वैल्यू है वो ना खराब हो जाएगी हमारी पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन नेटवर्क वगैरह उसके थ्रू से yes you that is a point so depending on the you are saying basically implying that because of different characteristics of a city so it might be feasible it might not be feasible so you need to have a more in depth analysis you cannot just say that built up density is that or that so you need to have more uh, you are right sharia yes hamza please uh, yes sir mai add karna chahunga ke maine jo point kiya na वो बेसिकली पिशावर बीआरटी के रिस्पेक्ट से मैंने किया था क्योंकि पिशावर डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी में किसी से मेरे बात हुई थी उन्होंने मुझे बताया कि जो मेन जो सबसे बड़ा इशू था ना वो ये था बीआरटी बिल्ट अप एरियाज के थ्रू जा रहा है और वो सारे कमर्शियल एरियाज हैं अब वहाँ पर कोई भी ना तो लैंड बेचता है और अगर उसके सामने से बी गुजरती है तो मतलब अगर नीचे आ जाए तो उनकी लैंड डिवेल्यू होती है और मीनिंग इशू पे इशू होती है ना डेवलप्ड लैंड के ऊपर अगर आप एक ट्रांजिट सिस्टम बनाते हैं तो मैंने इस रिस्पेक्ट से वो पॉइंट किया था यू आर राइट हमजा यू आर राइट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट अ केस ऑफ लाहौर इन व्हिच चिबुर्जी बस वाज राइट ऑन इन द राइट वे ऑफ द ऑरेंज ट्रेन सो दे हैड टू गिव देयर वाज अ लॉन्ग डिले इन द केस इन द कोर्ट्स एंड इवेंचुअली दे हैड टू रीडिजाइन द path to get uh, to have a i think a buffer of 200 300 meter away from the culture heritage site uh, so yes you're right so that brings to another question that what is the optimum time to launch a public transportation system or a, or a train station train system what is the optimum in your opinion when to launch it then if we've launched it before uh, before uh if anyone is settled there so it will be inefficient and if uh, we uh, we launch, if we cannot if people are living there so it's again problematic to launch so what is the uh, yes i'm with please so i think at the early stages of the development of a city uh, it will be more feasible to develop the public transport as a uh, as, as a that we, we we will be able to control the uh, development of the city as as people will automatically uh, establish themselves around that uh, route of uh, that public transport sir okay good point good point so uh, uh, one of the main thing which uh, uh, this from the discussion i seem that uh, transportation or this public transportation should have been uh, pre designed in the or maybe added into the master plan of a city that this will be the future of the city and we need to have leave a space at least for the public transportation system network over here so in the future we may need to launch public transportation system instead of then just like which hamza pointed out in case of peshawar uh, it would be very problematic to buy the land okay so let's move on and let's talk about uh, with respect to density so density is uh, good where if you want to have a transportation related energies if you want to lay, uh, see that in high density areas your transportation energy cost is low so per capita cost energy wise if, if, uh, it's very optimal so although you have public transportation uh, uh, launched in very these big cities new york as well they have a very comprehensive uh, public transportation system but its density is com- is comparatively low and this graph or this data basically shows you that as the city is the city is dense then transportation related fuel or energy consumption is low okay another yes another is that what about car use we we talk about uh, uh, density and car use where there is high density development uh, car use is limited okay uh, now it is comparatively to the let's say uh which uh, it's one of an indicator we've talked about in the previous lectures as well that having a car is an indicator of development or indicator of economic asset economic power so in high density areas even if people have car they will opt for less use of car use and maybe they will then opt for public transportation so that will ultimately give you a low transportation energy consumption 
So density also plays a very vital role in, uh, uh, I would say, uh, use of power. It will as a deterrent. Now, what happened is that uh, some people assume uh, that if, uh, for example, talking about city A, uh, like it's it has higher density than B. More people live in city A than B, right? And city A and city B is of the same size. Got my point? City A and city B, same size, different population. City A has large number of population compared to city B. So do you think that city A will have more number of cars as compared to city B? Like for example, population density, is it directly related to car? Number of people living in an area is directly proportional to the number of cars in that area. Yes, Rizwan? नहीं सर सिटी बी की ज्यादा होंगी कार्स और लेकिन मैं सिर्फ ये एक चीज ऐड ऑन करना चाह रहा था कि आप कहते हैं ना कि अर्बन डेंसिटी लाइक ये ये कंडीशनल हो सकता है ना कि अर्बन डेंसिटी पे जिस तरह जरूरी थोड़ी है या तो एफिशिएंट ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम हो ये जो पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम हो एफिशिएंट हो तब जाके आपने जो बात बोली तब वो एक किस्म का लायबल है और हो सकती है कंडीशनल है ना फिर तो Okay, okay, that's right. And we have a lot of conditions already. But generally, this data shows that if number of population in a certain area is more, car use will be less. So number of population, for example, if we say number of population, okay, you I might say that more is the number of population, more will be the number of cars. But if no and more people per density per, per area, then car use will be less. Less. So that is another uh, indicator that maybe dense, high density development will discourage car use and people will opt for public transportation system. So uh, nowadays, all of our like cities are more or less polycentric, like many CBDs are around the city. And in European, Japanese, and Chinese city, they tend to be monocentric, one CBD oriented, and people are traveling, and they are very much dense as compared. And Australian American cities, they are very depending on, uh, they are very much promote, uh, they promote the automobile, and they also tend to be polycentric. So that polycentricity and monocentricity uh, has that land use basically that also has kind of a effect on your transportation network and your city shape. So, and depending upon those uh, uh, CBDs, your movements can be organized or cannot, can be disorganized. Like we can predict movements and sometimes we cannot predict the movements. Okay, but this is, uh, this is another figure we show different, this, these four, five, five different cities in which that as your uh, distance from city center increases, and bed sea decreases, the density will decrease. So maybe in the outskirts, maybe people which have, will have low densities, they will prefer car use. They will use car because we established that low density, population density is low, will have more car use. So people living in the city center or near the city center, they will obviously they will not opt for car. And people living in the suburbs or outskirts they will opt for more cars. So that is again um, suggested by the data. Okay, so this is uh, like how many percentage of people they own a car and as compared to the city center, city center and the outskirts. So this is an example from America in which central cities have kind of a relatively uh, low percentage of people having a car as compared to the Central cities. So this is another uh, uh, kind of uh, evolution of urban densities, depending upon the type of your automobiles and transportation network. So European cities they tend to have a very steady growth as the time moves on, and whereas uh, as you go away from the city, and while North America it has a kind of there's 
predominantly many cities, they have a very high haphazard uh, growth and a sharp uh, uh, increase of uh, changes in density. So uh, any question till now? So uh, we have completed our first part of the whole section of today's study. Any question till now? Anything to comment? Okay, I'll stop the recording now.